Daily Minutes voor vandaag. Zolang ik nog enigszins de griep heb, moet ik het helaas doen met alleen kant en klare nieuwsberichten. De komende dagen is daardoor de uitzending waarschijnlijk dus nog in het Engels. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is AWRL Audio News. Radio amateurs responded to the ongoing wildfire emergency in California. Earlier this month, Aries volunteers in Amador County supported communications at a Red Cross shelter at the Jackson Rancheria Conference Center, which has been housing evacuees from the Butte wildfire in Northern California. California. Auxiliary Communication Service, or ACS, volunteers were called out late on September 9th. Amador County Aries Emergency Coordinator Daniel Edwards, KJ6WYW, had communications set up at the shelter by midnight and began contacting other Aries members and scheduling operators to work the shelter station 24 hours a day. Members of Yolo County and Sacramento County Aries also assisted. Edwards said 20 operators took part in the activation with two operators per shift. The station at the shelter was active for 120 hours. Bill Gustafson, K6BIL, who took part in the Amador County Aries response, said that at one point, with cell phone, internet, television, and landline down, my only source of information was ham radio. As some roads reopened and evacuees were able to return home, Amador County Aries was released from supporting Red Cross shelter communications early on September 14th. The Butte fire also extended into Calaveras County in the ARRL San Joaquin Valley section. The heart of our county is burned, Calaveras Amateur Radio Society President Ken Sanders, AE6LA, reported, with much of the area under mandatory or advisory evacuation alerts. We've had an informal net going since the beginning on our 145.17 repeater, he said on September 14th, adding he expected activity to continue for several days. Raging southeast of Sacramento in the Stanislaw National Forest region, the Butte Fire has consumed more than 71,000 acres and was 49% contained as of September 17th. Meanwhile, the 70,000-plus acre Valley Fire west of Sacramento has destroyed nearly 600 homes as well as many other structures. ARRL Sacramento Valley Section Manager Ron Murdoch, W6KJ, said amateur radio operators coordinated by Charlie Porter, N6JOA, at the University of California, Davis, have been collecting veterinary supplies for evacuated domestic animals and livestock. What do you hear over the air? CQ serenade. Tune in anywhere on the band, any corner of any land. Let's put it there, right on the air with CQ Serenade. Da di da di da da di da. Makes a fella feel la di da when he unbends, making you friends with CQ Serenade. Radio amateurs in Utah have again made use of a broadband ham radio mesh network to support a public event. Charles Gray, KE6QZU, headed a group of ham radio volunteers that set up a high-speed broadband ham net or BBHN mesh network in the rugged Wasatch Mountains of northern Utah to provide communication along the final 30 miles of the September 11th and 12th Wasatch 100 Mile Mountain Endurance Race. Other hams covered the first 70 miles of the race using more conventional conventional technology, including FM voice and packet. Using the BBHN mesh system, the hams helped race officials keep track of the racers and their progress along the extremely difficult course. BBHN mesh uses ordinary Wi-Fi technology on amateur radio frequencies, which meant the mesh network was able to cover a considerable amount of real estate, even in the challenging mountainous environment. The race course encompassed more than 53,000 feet of elevation change, and it's not unusual for participants to drop out before reaching the finish line. For the hams, the terrain added a challenge to setting up the network. At some points, they had to maneuver over huge boulders, some the size of cars, on their way to the summit of Clayton Peak on the north side of the Brighton Ski Resort. The radio amateurs had to work in teams to hoist their radio gear over the rocks to reach the top. The mesh network included five sites, including two unattended relay points. The group employed TeamTalk software for race communication. In addition to Gray, other participants included Brad Rupp, AC7BR, Stephen Baxter, K7SRB, Grant Gardner, KC7HOU, David Bauman, KF7MCF, Robert Jelf, KG7OHV, Doug Thompson, W1DUG, Taylor Brinton, KE7BME, and Rich Allen, N7HRA.